guys welcome to my youtube channel fitness desserts hill youtube channel so today we, we are learning something really exciting and interesting something that seems like a mystery but it's very achievable you'll be surprised that a lot of times when you want to try something the resources that you need and the techniques you need are just not far beyond your reach but you just need to learn it so today i'm going to be teaching how to achieve the chocolate peanut balls these same chocolate balls can actually be painted gold they can be splashed up with some gold dust or gold paste gold paint chocolate splash or anything anything but whatever it is the point is they're going to be peanut balls those kind of balls all edible anyway made with 100 percent chocolate as seen here already for the purpose of this video i already had had my chocolate melted using my melting pot here as always i always give two options to the melting style you could use the double butter style it's also called the bain marie style or that's where you put the, the the a smaller pot of simmer water over a larger stainless steel bowl without the water touching the underneath just the steam helping it to melt perfectly like this or you use your melting pot this is electric so for the purpose of those that probably don't have access to electricity at the point when they need to do it you don't have anything to worry about okay so because the bain marie style you can still use your stove you can use your gas you can still use your electric oven whatever it is electric gas cooker so it's it's actually easier but this is faster so i already had my chocolate melted because for you to make bowls you need to make sure that after you melt your chocolate you can use it in that really warm state because it's going to run down the sides and make your coating really harder and takes a longer time so you melt your chocolate and then you just wait for it to, to cool down i'm not talking about setting now you shouldn't set at all because it's 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 it will be really workable like you see here this is actually really workable i can show you what it looks like this is compound chocolate this is a two cavity chocolate melting pot all right so I just simply plugged it to the unit to the power point and then i just let it melt so for those that work in a very cold climate you don't need to keep melting and melting all you need to do is this is on the map this comes in in two two controls the 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 mark of two and the mark of one mark of one states it's been warm or cooling all right see let me show you so it comes with two marks so if you want to melt you just simply turn it into mark of two so if you turn into the mark of two that just simply means that it's going to melt but once you're done melting if you're not really if you're not immediately ready to work with it then you just turn it to warm so it keeps you warm like you just put it in a warm oven so it wouldn't go back to that solid state till you're ready to go it would keep cooling down so the reason why i put this in the second cavity is because i want to show you what it looks like to work with a compound chocolate and in working with compound chocolate, any good ch compound chocolate is good. You need to chop them up into the bowl, into the cavity before you melt to increase the melting time so that you don't have too much heat trapped in your chocolate. You really don't need that because I personally don't temper my chocolate. A lot of people do. It's amazing if you temper your chocolate bowl. I always look for the faster route as long as it gives me that amazing result. So, I just make sure that my heat isn't too much and the, and the main way you can do that is to always chop your chocolate into tiniest bits so that it can just melt really fast and then it doesn't get too hot all right so going straight to the point now so you need you know the, how versatile this is is that it already comes with something like you know something you know like this like you can put your tools on it so for the purpose of this video you need your craft knife a knife like this it could be the one with the blunt edge but this is the one with the sharp edge i use for my cakes so i'm used to using it you need a paint brush i don't have a bigger one this works just perfectly the soft brutal brush like this i use it all the time for it so i like the one that doesn't have like a brownish color so that i can know if it's really clean before i use it so I have this already i've used this over time and this is what is going to be the surprise in our chocolate bowl when we're done i'll be showing you how to bind it together trust me there isn't any chocolate bowl that comes in the 
in in a single round pattern you'd need to have some joining done like to give it that friction so that's what i'll be teaching today i don't know if you're excited but i am so let's go on so my checklist is melted now my brush is ready my knife is ready and of course my my silicone mold is ready you can actually overrule this if you want to make chocolate balls there are the plastic ones but this is better because it's actually very flexible so just have a flip and it pops out as long as you you coat your cavity properly and you leave it to set properly now for me now to cut my balls now i'm going to be using two rounds of cotton all right if you're not sure of your coating you can go as much as three rounds because you really don't want to go all through that stress or all through that process and then end up with a broken half sphere so it's called a half sphere mold silicone half sphere mold it's sold in a lot of big tool stores all right so you can just get yours and try it. and then it come in different cavities this is the six cavity one there is a five cavity and that is bigger there is a 12 24 cavity those are the smaller balls but i'd need this because this is the only one that can actually achieve the result i wanted to achieve today so i just want you guys to get it so <laughs> that's just it so after that i just simply take this out see it's not hot it's not even warm it's cool that's why i can touch it no burning normal temperature so i'm just going to pour this in ensure that your cavity each cavity is clean and um, without any stains or marks or anything as much as possible this is so i just simply pour this in okay do this the second time i don't have a specific measurement of what i pour in all i do is pour it and then start coating when i coat it and i'm not satisfied with the thickness of the coating i just add up and then i fill it up so now i need to sit down because that's just what it is so that's it so first of all i just try and just run it around a bit to so just try and eyeball what i have here like if it can go all the way around but this kind of mold i'm using is actually very tricky i might not advise you to use this color there are brighter colors except of course you are working with white chocolate like for instance now this is dark chocolate and this is a brown colored cavity um silicone so i'm trying to repeat the process with the second cavity now you know working on this i'm just trying to remember the first time i ever tried to make this i can't even laugh honestly it was not a pleasant experience i think i spent about two hours on one <laughs> or two cavities but it kept on breaking breaking and breaking in fact i was even making that i didn't use the good chocolate but it's still the chocolate i use thing i still use now so it wasn't about that it was about getting the technique right and i think i was doing it and i don't know but but now and then it takes constant practice it is nothing hard to do but it's just a technique that's why i said i'd like you to follow me closely so see what i'm doing now so i'm already done with the first round of coating what i do now is to take it into the fridge not freezer into the fridge because i don't need the temperature too harsh and then i'll pop it in for just about two minutes because you know how chocolate now this chocolate doesn't have any bit of fat in it because for chocolate balls and any chocolate art as the case may be you don't need any bit of fat because of the way it has a tendency of collapsing under any warm temperature but if it's in the original state all you are doing is melting it and then it's easier to set and that's the advantage it has for the balls so that you can use it for your gravity balls or anything as the case may be without worrying about it melting off or melting away in transit or anything so always use your chocolate in the original form just melt it the way i explained earlier and then use it as applicable so now that i'm done with this i'll take it into the fridge like i said for just about two minutes two minutes there isn't any eyeball time for this or any specific time but two minutes is just fine because I just needed to set up. So once it comes out set, all I need to, to do is just to add the second bit of 
um coating and then i would make sure that the second bit of cotton is thicker almost like i would be able to see the thickness from the edges that's a good way to know how thick your 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 ball is so that you can know if it's going to be able to withstand the heat that is going to go through whilst binding it together because for you to bind it together you still need heat and you know how chocolate melts easily so you can you you can make it too light so that it doesn't just melt off whilst you you try and get the friction of the heat so don't worry when i'm doing that you'd understand me better so cutting the second time now see so it's already hard to touch so i'll repeat the same process but no, but you need to understand that at this point the chocolate is going to set faster you know against the old one as against when i did the first time so i need to be faster when coating because you know how chocolate reacts to cold temperature you know it's just coming out from the fridge and it's really cold so whilst i'm working on it already it will be setting you'll see now for yourself so i don't necessarily have to take it back to the freezer or fridge but i will because yeah you know i need it to be really hard before i see see what i was talking about see, it's already getting firmed up it's not as liquid or as runny as it was when i just poured it so i can't just leave it and just do it so casually or without being fast because you can just end up having that large clump of chocolate that i poured <laughs> You can just have it just set in the milk and once it sets you ruined it already because you can't go and melt this it needs to start all over so the idea is to work fast see what i was talking about see already see if you if you see already how it's looking really see dried see and if you see from the sample already that even the edges are thick so after this i'll just have some little fine tuning and i'll return it into the freezer at this time around because i just need to really make it really hard yeah so I both coatings now and you can see from the video how thick each of the cavities are i'd rather it's thicker than take the chance of it not being thick enough so at this point now see i literally used up all the chocolates so at this point now before i return it to the video i cannot i'm going to trim up all this excess that you know that spilled from working it out before i return it to set properly because if i don't trim it now once i return it to the freezer or into the fridge as the case may be it's going to be so hard and harder to cut off and if i'm not very careful I'd, i could end up breaking it like because of the you know the, the harsh contrast of the chocolate and the reason why i'm doing this why this step cannot be omitted is because remember that i'm going to be joining them together so as much as possible you need to get your edges the top edge of your chocolate as clean and as smooth and as flat as possible you can see that the two, the two are different and this looks better obviously so you need to see just so you don't waste your chocolates i'll just put it right in so that when you 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 bind them together you have a perfect illusion just a little work in here and there and then it looks like a perfect round ball you don't necessarily have to notice as in nobody really necessarily have has to notice that you joined them together as long as you do it properly so the first step is to making sure both surface sides are really leveled and flat as you see here so after doing this now i just need to take it back for just even less than a minute safe just i just need it to be in that very intense cold temperature so that it can really firm up it's hard now it's dry even if i want to take it out now i can but i wouldn't advise that because see already it's already even trying to pop out itself but i just want to make sure it is really really rock hard so that by the time i put it over the heat to bind it it wouldn't melt so i'll be back it's out now and then we're going straight to it so this is how you take it out see so what it looks like how fair so you can drop it here that's the purpose of this it's like a plastic rack 
second we want to same process so this is the part where it gets interesting okay so at this point now everything is ready and set i already popped the you know the pan over low heat so it's hot not too hot see i can handle it but it's hot it's not steaming hot so this is the part where it gets interesting this is how you get the pinata so at the point where it's ready like this both sides are clean and neat all you need just to just pour in i used m and so i used m and m here you can use any chocolate of your choice so see now so i'm going to be using this overheat please bring it closer so i've done this see it wouldn't take long so can you see what i've done here now so all i need is just cover it like a kiss immediately and then give it a little press i'm not talking of press to break oh. just a little pressure to seal it up like you're closing a lid so at this point it's done but for me it still doesn't look as perfect as i would want it to be that's where this comes to play and then i'll just take this now and just try and see what i'm doing just try to seal it up nicely using the sharper side like this see clean it So you can see that you can compare here to here now so this looks more realistic than this so you can see how fast that took right but yeah this is what it is so yeah so trying to make sure that it's well balanced out think what's good to go so now i just wanted to ask you imagine if you get a kids cake order all right and they let you do your thing and you know how kids like surprises most especially kids you can imagine maybe dropping a little note on the box or on the pack of whatever it is you're delivering and telling them to shake and break for a little surprise why this is actually interesting it is not only for kids as adults if you just want maybe your dessert or your sweet tooth treats to be satisfied you can just get a glass of hot milk like a glass of hot milk steaming hot milk just pop this into it it's going to have like an explosion like you know the heat is going to penetrate and then then you can see the m m or whatever it is get into the milk and then you just have a quick dessert so this is where it is now the fun part is how so yeah that would be all for mm, would that be all yeah well that wouldn't be all i would have said but i'm just trying i want to go further to tell you how you can actually design this this looks quite boring at the point now so there are different ways you can design this you can either get a white chocolate already you know thinned out with edible fat and just drizzle over it and then it looks really colorful or any other color as the case may be you can decide to put some edible glitters i'm just looking around seeing what i can use you can decide to use an equally running consistency of dark chocolate to just you know drizzle over it and just make it look really fun and then of course you can use this as well to just give it like this see so this is actually not like the full painting so it's just like a slight coating to just give it like a stain of gold makes it more mature and you know gives it that very okay so after all said and done we have our peanut chocolate bowl ready i'm not going to be using this to surprise anybody i'm going to be breaking it and eating it by myself but now this is actually very good a good surprise thing you can actually organize even if it's in boxes or anything you can do it but i'm not going to bore you with more details of what you can do with it but you've seen how i achieved this and you can also achieve it so try and follow all the instructions and and try it out and of course i'll be waiting 
to hear from you to get your reviews and feedbacks on how easy or how tricky it was for you whatever the case is i'll be here for you so as always i remain your favorite girl famous desserts view i would always be your favorite girl anyway so do me well to always click the like button on my videos and of and of course just please subscribe to my youtube channel just so that you can always be the first to know when i drop new videos and ideas to help everybody you know to be better versions of themselves in their craft and baking precisely so till next time i remain filming your favorite your favorite girl so see you next time have a lovely day